Hi everyone and welcome to Valentine Garden Wreath Making Workshop Virtual 2020. So um, hopefully by now you've all picked up your kit and we thank you very much for ordering your kit and thank you to the Liverpool Library for helping us out with all of this. So I want to show you what should be in your kit. So you should have a bow which will be our final step. Then we have some decorations to go in it. This kit has all uh, the same decorations, but I know when you stopped in, you were able to pick out whatever you like, and hopefully, uh, it'll, it'll be, I'm sure it'll be beautiful. Um, there's a packet of wire, your wreath frame, and then a baggie full of green. Should be, should be more than enough to make one really nice wreath. So I want to start out, so if you've done our workshop before, the frame is a little different this time. We just thought we would try this out and see how it works. I think it's a really great form for what we're doing, and you'll see it'll be really easy. So step one is going to be start making little handfuls of greens, because what we're going to do is make bunches and go around the wreath. And again, if you've done this before, you sort of already know the drill. So it should just be a comfortable handful, nothing too thick, about like this. You can see I'm not stressing or straining my hand. Oops, I should have undone my wire, hold on. Loosen up your wire, unfold it. Okay. Then take a piece of wire about midway through the, the, the wire, you want to wrap it around your bundle and give it a really tight twist. Don't, I notice this wire can break if it's too tight, so just comfortably tight twist of wire. Then you want to lay it in one direction. See if my arm's in the way. Like so. And I like flipping my frame upside down and you want to wrap the wire around the frame. If you like and there's a lot of extra wire, you can go back and wrap it across the top. And actually what I like to do is take the extra wire and go a little farther up my bundle and wrap that as well. Kind of fold it in place a little bit better. And then extra wire just get tucked. So that's our first bundle, first step basically wrap and repeat. So I'm gonna keep doing this with you. It's a very simple process. And don't, don't worry about having little pieces, just work those in. Pieces that aren't real complete, they add to the, the bulk of your bundle. Keep wrapping. Twist. That background noise you hear is our heater. It is, it is a winter, almost. Again, I'm gonna come up on my bundle a little bit. Wrap a little bit of the wire around and twist. So this takes a few minutes, but it's not hard. So we've been real busy here at Ballantine Garden. Christmas season is always real busy. Our greenhouse is full of poinsettias. We have very fresh Christmas trees in the lot. All, almost all of them are Fraser fir trees. Again, you can flip this upside down if it's easier. And Fraser fir, and that's what some of these greens are, by the way. This is Fraser fir and balsam fir that we're using. These are very fragrant, very, very fresh, I can tell you. We, some of these, we went to the farm and cut ourselves. Um, others were cut for us by a local farmer that we know very well. So you can be sure that uh, as long as you keep it in a cool place, your wreath is gonna last forever. <laughs> if it's not sunny, we've had our wreaths pulled up until Easter, like change a bow to pink or uh, a Valentine's Day color. Um, 
So again, we've got fresh wreaths on the ground. We have fresh trees, um, mostly Fraser fir. There's a few concolor fir. If you're not familiar with concolor fir, it is a really nice, um, almost long needle tree. It's kind of in between. It's not as long a needle as pine, uh, not as short as Fraser fir, but it's a very cool tree. The needle retention on that is really nice. Um, and they're fragrant. The, if you break open one of the needles, it'll actually smell like citrus, which um, is its trademark uh, scent. So, uh, and when you put lights on a concolor fur, they just kind of glow through. The, the needles themselves have almost a bluish cast to them. They're really beautiful. So again, we're just repeating our steps here. And you might notice in the background here, this is our new potting bar area. So this is a new section of the store where if you want to, you can come in and use it to repot some things. Um, if you purchase a plant with us, uh, you can come in and uh, a plant in a pot. You can either bring your own pot or you can purchase a pot from us and we'll um, only charge you for the potting soil, or if you choose to use any kind of moss or stones, we have those available as well. Um, so this is a really cool place to, uh, that we've got brand new. It's turning out to be a great area to do this demonstration as well, so I'm really happy with that. And um, so again, and um, we're going to have some winter hours and be open at least, uh, we're still trying to figure out what's gonna happen with the virus, but we hope to be open through the winter. Um, so come on in and take a look at our house plant selection, which is um, probably the greatest it's ever been. Um, house plants have become um, a really big category for us, and um, a lot of younger folks have taken it on. So uh, we have a lot of nice tropical plants, house plants for people um, to pick up, and again, We've stocked up on our pottery. We have a lot of potting soil and other things too. So um, we're even uh, making some of our own moss poles, which are really important for some of the vining plants, like some of the philodendrons. So we're working on that. Okay, so here's where I am so far. I'm getting there little by little. Um, I guess what I didn't say early on is your bundles need to overlap in the same direction. I, I probably I apologize for not saying it sooner, but the first bundle goes in one direction, the second one in the same direction, and so on and so on. So you're overlapping everybody in the same direction. And try to keep your branches uh, right side up. Again, I probably should have mentioned it sooner. <laughs> but hard to remember the things that you think are uh, old hat. Done a few of these. And some people might be wondering where Tim is right now. Tim is behind the camera. <laughs> we switched roles today. So if it seems a little wobbly, you know who to blame. <laughs> but he, he's actually doing a great job with the new technology. And, uh, you know, we've had to learn some new things uh, with this virus happening. Uh, we're updating our website again for Christmas items also. So, uh, and look, if you are afraid to shop, please give us a call. We're more than happy to help you out. Um, we can talk over the phone. We can do local deliveries. You know, don't be shy. We're here to help you. And... Um, make sure you get what you need for Christmas. So again, give us a shout. Check out the website. We're, we're updating it daily uh, just to make sure we're here for you. So I'm getting up to my last bundle. 
You can see there's still kind of a hole and you want to make sure and uh, tuck this one underneath the first one. You'll see that um, there's a space on the ring for that uh, and it'll make it look much more complete before you're done. And if I'm going too fast, you should be able to watch this video again. <clears throat> It'll, it's on our YouTube channel, just Valentine Gardens on YouTube. And um, so you can turn it on and watch it as many times as you like. Okay, so there's my finished wreath. When you're all done, you should be able to shake it around and have everybody stay in place, nothing falling out. If it seems like something's kind of loose, hopefully you have enough extra wire in your kit. You could just put another piece of wire over a loose area, wrap it around the back, tie it down. I also feel like there are a little bit of long pieces, some wonky looking spots. So I'm going to go through the switch to my right hand here and do a little clip. If you have pruning shears or even uh, kitchen shears might be fine for this, just to sort of, and then I want to make the center a little more open, but if you like your wreath a little bit wild, then don't do this step. It's, it's all up to you how you want it to look. And I could even manicure this even more, but I kind of like it a little bit open and crazy. So for me, I feel like the next step is to decide where I'd like to put my bow. So you can either put it on the top, which is always my favorite. Some people like it on the side and other people really enjoy it on the bottom. I'd like to put mine on the top. This is a good place too, if you feel like there's a weak spot or a place that's a little thin, that's a good place for the bow. Same thing, the bow has some double wire on the back. You wanna just wrap that wire all the way around the frame. I would recommend that you never, um, don't make a loop with this wire or hang from this wire. It tends to pull on the bow and then the bow starts to look kind of strange after a little while. So we'll, with, in the end, we'll create a, another loop. So there's my bow. And then I just like to put my ornaments around. These have pretty strong stakes. You should be able to put this through the middle of the frame. I don't know if you can see, if the light is right, that I have the stake through the frame. Then I'm going to twist it up. I'm gonna wrap it around itself, basically. Make a nice, tight bend in that wire. It should, it should be able to wrap around itself. And then I should be able to even pick this up. Although, I'm gonna redo this, I think. <clears throat> Again, start over if you have to. I think I'm gonna go all the way around the frame. Just see how far you can get with it. And then you can even wrap it around the frame. Worst case scenario is you can slip a wire through the middle of the pick. There. Um, if you had to, you could put a wire through the middle here and then use the wire to wrap around the frame. One way or another, we'll get it to work. Because we're hand making these, everyone is a little bit different, so hooking things on can be a little different from one to the other, even from one pick to the next, so.
Alright, so I'm all, all decorated. I think it looks nice. And now we just need to put a wire on the back. This wire is kind of long, so I'm going to fold it in half, which also makes it extra strong. And then right here on the back, because my bow is on the top, I like to make it right behind my bow. You can just, again, just wrap it around the frame if I can find it. Wrap it around the frame. I like to give it a, a twist down low, kind of holds it in place. And then make a loop and just do a lot of twisting so that the wires are nice and tight and secure like that. So that gives you a good hook to hang from. And there you have it. Really simple, really easy, really beautiful. And um, if you find that when you're doing this, you're missing something, just give us a shout and pop in and we'll make sure we get you whatever you need. Um, again, uh, we are all decked out for Christmas, ready for uh, a great holiday season. We've already had some good days. We hope you all had a happy Thanksgiving and um, happy times ahead. Thank you so much.